and all of you are requested to go to your respective group meetings only. Everyone has been allocated a specific group. Please stick to your own group which you represent. Another important thing is we request you to keep your mobile phones outside the meeting rooms. Lockers have been provided with lock and key facility and you can keep your mobile phones inside the lockers and lock it. Dinner would be at 8 p.m. at Aravli Lawns and before the dinner a small culture program is being presented over there so we request you to be present on time at 8 p.m. for the culture program and the dinner. And the last request is only delegates are requested to stay in this complex. Non-delegates, including the staff, is requested to kindly go out. There's enough arrangement in this hotel complex only, so you can sit there and relax. This entire place is only for the delegates. So I would like to thank our Congress Adhyaksha कि वो आए हमें संबोधित करें और इस ऐतिहासिक नव संकल्प शिविर में हम लोगों को मार्गदर्शन दें सबसे अनुरोध है जोरदार तालियां बजा करके Members of the CWC, Ashok Gelochi, Govind Singh Dutasaraji, friends and colleagues who have come from different parts of the country, I would like to add my welcome you, welcome to you too. Our Chintan Shivir in this historic city with such a glorious heritage has as its theme Nab Sankal. It gives us an opportunity to discuss amongst ourselves the numerous challenges that the country is facing as a result of the policies of the BJP and of the RSS and its affiliates. It is also an occasion to deliberate on the many tasks ahead of us. So it is both a chintan about national issues and a meaningful atma chintan about our party organization. I am well aware that many of our colleagues wanted to be here with us, but we had to limit participation for a variety of reasons. But I'm sure they will understand. And not being here does not in any way devalue the role they are playing in our organization. Friends, by now it has become abundantly and most painfully clear what Prime Minister Modi and his colleagues really mean by their frequently repeated slogan, maximum governance, minimum government. It means keeping the country in a state of permanent polarization, compelling people to live in a constant state of fear and insecurity. It means viciously targeting, victimizing, and often brutalizing minorities who are 
an integral part of our society and are equal citizen of our republic. It means using our society's age-old pluralities to divide us and subverting the carefully nurtured idea of unity in diversity. It means threatening and intimidating political opponents, maligning their reputation, jailing them on flimsy pretext, misusing investigative agencies against them. It means eroding the independence and professionalism of all institutions of democracy. It means the wholesale reinvention of history, the constant denigration of our leaders, especially Jawaharlal Nehru, and the systematic move to distort, deny, and destroy their contributions, their achievements, and their sacrifices. It means glorifying the killers of Mahatma Gandhi and their ideologues. It means the blatant undermining of the principles and provisions of our nation's constitution, of its pillars of justice, liberty, equality, fraternity, and secularism. It means turning a blind eye to continued atrocities across the country on weaker sections especially Dalits, Adivasis, and women. It means using fear to make the bureaucracy, to make corporate India, to make civil society, and sections of the media fall in line. It means more empty slogans, diversionary tactics, and utter silence on the part of an ever so eloquent Prime Minister when the healing touch is most needed. It is not just the undermining of our long cherished values embodied in the Constitution that are now at grave risk. The fires of hatred and discord that are being ignited have taken a heavy toll on peoples, on their lives. This is having serious social consequences, much more serious than we can even imagine. The vast majority of Indians want to live in an atmosphere of peace, of amity and harmony. The BJP its cohorts and surrogates want to keep people in a state of perpetual frenzy and conflict. They constantly provoke, instigate, and inflame. We have to combat this growing virus of divisiveness that is being maliciously and mischievously spread. This we must do at all costs. <laughs> it is imperative to sustain high economic growth, to provide adequate employment opportunities for the youth. We must generate revenues needed for the welfare programs and improve the standard of living. But the worsening environment on social and social illiberalism and bigotry shakes the very foundation of economic growth. Starting with the disastrous demonetization on November 2016, the economy has been at a steep downslide. A large majority of MSMEs have been crippled. Unemployment has risen alarmingly, and for the first time, it appears that vast numbers of people 
have simply given up hope of finding jobs. Whatever support the central government has been able to provide in the past two years to people has been on account of most of the UPA programs, and to name just two of them, the Mahatma Gandhi Narega, the Employment Scheme, and the National Food Security. The sheer tenacity of farmers and their organization compelled the Modi government to repeal the three black laws. The Congress party stood by them steadfastly throughout their long struggle, both within parliament and outside. But the promises made by the prime minister to the farmers when they withdrew their agitation have yet to be fulfilled. Meanwhile, it looks as if procurement of wheat this year will fall steeply, threatening the very foundations of our national security, food security program. Prices of essential items of mass communication, of mass consumption, like cooking gas, cooking oil, pulses, vegetables, fertilizers, petrol and diesel continue their upward march, placing an intolerable burden on crores of families. Public sector companies built up with such careful planning with economic and social objectives in mind by earlier Congress government are now being privatized with a vengeance and to a chosen few. This will have disastrous consequences. Among other things, this means that one avenue for assured employment for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe will get totally closed. अब मैं कुछ बातें हिंदी में कहना चाहूँगी तो साथियों हमारे इस महान और सशक्त संगठन से समय समय पर अपने लाचीलेपान को दर्शाने की उम्मीद की जाती रही है और हर बार हमारे संगठन ने असरदार तरीके से अपनी प्रतिक्रिया दर्शाई है एक बार फिर हमसे यह उम्मीद की जा रही है कि हम अपना साहस हौसला और समर्पण की भावना का परिचय दें लेकिन आज जो हमारे संगठन के सामने परिस्थितियाँ उत्पन्न हुई है वे अभूतपूर्व है असाधारण परिस्थितियों का मुकाबला असाधारण तरीके से ही किया जा सकता है इस बात के प्रति मैं पूरी सचेत हूँ हर संगठन को न केवल जीवित रहने के लिए बल्कि बढ़ने के लिए भी समय समय पर अपने अंदर परिवर्तन लाने होते हैं हमें सुधारों की सख्त जरूरत है रणनीति में बदलाव दचागत सुधार और रोजाना काम करने के तरीके में परिवर्तन एक तरह से यह सबसे बुनियादी मुद्दा है लेकिन मैं ये भी जोर देकर कहना चाहती हूँ कि हमारा पूर्ण उत्थान सिर्फ विशाल सामूहिक प्रयासों से ही हो पाएगा और वो विशाल सामूहिक प्रयास ना ताले जा सकते हैं न ही ताले जाएंगे यह शिविर इस लंबे सफर में एक प्रभावशाली कदम है हमारे लंबे और सुनहरे इतिहास में आज एक ऐसा समय आया है जब हमें अपनी निजी आकांक्षाओं को 
संगठन के हितों के अधीन रखना होगा पार्टी ने हम सभी को बहुत कुछ दिया है अब समय है कर्ज उतारने का मैं मैं समझती हूँ मैं समझती हूँ इससे आवाक्षक और कुछ नहीं तो साथियों मैं आप सब से आग्रह करती हूँ कि अपने विचार खोलकर रखें मगर मगर बाहर सिर्फ एक ही संदेश जाना चाहिए संगठन की मजबूती दृढ़ निश्चय और एकता का संदेश यह निश्चय बरकरार रखना होगा हाल में मिली नाकामयाब नाकामयाबियों से हम बेखबर नहीं है ना ही हम बेखबर है उस संघर्ष से या उस संघर्ष की कठिनाइयों से जिसे हमें करना है और जीतना है लोगों की हमसे जो उम्मीदें हैं उनसे हम अनजान नहीं है व्यक्तिगत और सामूहिक रूप से यह प्रण लेने के लिए हम एकत्रित हुए हैं हम देश की राजनीति में अपनी पार्टी को फिर से उसी भूमिका मिलाएंगे जो भूमिका पार्टी ने सदैव निभाई है और जिस भूमिका की उम्मीद इन बिगड़ते हुए हालातों में देश की जनता हमसे करती है हम यहाँ पूरी विनम्रता के साथ आत्मा निरीक्षण तो कर रहे हैं लेकिन आज हम तय करें कि जब हम यहाँ से निकलेंगे तो हम एक नए आत्मविश्वास विश्वा, एक नई ऊर्जा के साथ और एक नई प्रतिबद्धता से प्रेरित होकर निकलेंगे आप सबको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय हिंद कांग्रेस अध्यक्षा के इस प्रेरणादायक उद्बोधन और मार्गदर्शन के लिए हम सब लोग इनका धन्यवाद करते हैं और हम लोगों को पूरी आशा है कि इस नव संकल्प शिविर से ही हम लोगों का आगे का रास्ता शुरू होगा मैं अब आप सब लोगों से अनुरोध करता हूं कि कृपया अपने अपने सब्जेक्ट मैटर के रूम्स में आप सबके सब लोग प्रस्थान करें और वहाँ पर हम लोगों का चिंतन अब शुरू होगा धन्यवाद